as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And a lot of people stop there, but I like that second verse. So that I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Here the writer of Hebrews is saying, I know the Lord will not leave me nor forsake me. He knew the book of Deuteronomy. He knew the Pentateuch. He knew the Bible. He knew the Torah, as we would call it, the, the Old Testament. And he's claiming it here. He's rewriting it in the New Testament. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He knew it was true. God would be with him in the toughest of times. In the worst of times, Jesus was there. We can boldly proclaim, one, the Lord is our helper. And secondly, we need not to fear, fear rather, what man can do unto us. I think of Corey Timboom. How many have heard of Corey Timboom? As she was in that concentration camp. And, and how many have seen the, the movie The Hiding Place? A good movie. I understand the books better. But anyways, she was a, a very godly lady. And certainly, I would say that she was purified through that camp and maybe sanctified later on. But in the movie, I was, we was watching that uh, recently, my wife has seen it several times, where they would come and, and those uh, Nazis would beat her and so on. And she would cry out, Lord, Savior. She knew who to cry out to. Her faith was so strong, she cried out to God. In the worst of the time, and I think of that, the Lord is our helper and we don't need to fear what man can do to us. Yeah, he can, he can, they can torture us. The Muslims are chopping people's heads off. They can do a lot to us, but they can't touch our soul. Amen. We're going to heaven. The scripture says, don't fear, what, well, who has, um, don't fear what, what man can do to the body, but rather fear him who has power over the soul, Jesus. Amen. He has power over our soul. Yeah. I like that old hymn, wonderful hymn, and really a, a true hymnity from my understanding. For it to be a hymn, it has to be all verses and no chorus. And then so, most songs anyways. And then other songs, if they have a chorus and it's considered a, a gospel song, so you might say that this is a, a true hymn. And we've heard it before, all the way my Savior leads me. I like what that says. We, we, I think it's so wonderful. Not only do we have songs in our hymnal, but we have poetry. If you can't sing it all, um, then you can pick up the hymnal and you can read some godly poetry. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread. Gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul athirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of His grace. Perfect rest to me is promised and my Father's blessed embraced. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. I like what Joshua says. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither thou be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. The psalmist also writes, where can I go from your spirit? Whither can I flee from your presence? He goes on, and we can't escape God. He's everywhere. Many people try to run from the Lord, but we can't escape. He's everywhere. Where can I go from your spirit? Whither can I flee from your presence? He has promised us His presence. Praise the Lord. Yes, we have the promise of His presence. We're just looking at, again, just a couple of promises. We could, um, if we were to stand here, or if we were to be here all night and give all the promises, we would be here for... Several years, I think. <laughs> yes, we have the promise of His presence, but secondly, I want to look at the presence, or the promise, rather, of the peace of God. He's promised peace to the children of God. The Lord's peace is uncomparable to any peace this old world 
has to offer. Many people try to find their peace, and I know a lot of people, especially on the weekend and after they've had a, a rough shift and they don't know the Lord, they like to go and buy a bunch of alcohol and drink till they're drunk, and, 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 and they try, they're seeking for peace. There's a brother in our church that says you'll never find joy and peace at the bottom of that beer bottle. You'll never find anything good at the bottom of that bottle of beer. They'll never satisfy. Many people are on drugs. West Virginia has quite a drug epidemic. It's so sad to see how the devil has such a foothold, such a bondage. And it's my, it's my uh, heart's desire to see the church be uh, active and ministering to all those around us and, and to those that are, are, are lost in sin and, and addicted to drugs. But they try to find for peace. They're seeking. They're looking. Many people are sucked into false prophets as our verse in, in the bulletin this morning was talking about. They try to look for peace. They want to serve God, but they go to the wrong person. The Mormons come to their door. The Jehovah's Witness come to their door. They get sucked into that church, and, and, and then you realize that the salvation is not what the Bible says. And they don't really come to know Jesus, but yet they're still searching for peace. They won't find it. But God, Jesus, the Son of God, the great I am, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has offered peace to his children. He has offered peace to us. The Lord gives us a spoken peace. I want to look at Psalm 85, 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. I like what Adam Clark says. How many have heard of uh, Dr. Adam Clark? Good holiness commentator. Uh, we've used him for many years, and his commentary is still excellent. Looking at that verse where it says, I will hear what God will speak. Uh, Adam Clark says, The psalmist goes as a prophet to consult the Lord. And having made his request, waits an answer from the spirit of prophecy. He is satisfied that the answer will be gracious, and having received it, he relates it to his people. And commenting on, he will speak peace. Clark says he will give prosperity to the people in general and to his saints, his followers in particular. And commenting on, but let them not turn again to folly. Clark says, let them not abuse the mercy of their God by sinning anymore against them. I like that. We want to have true peace. We need not to sin anymore. Here all the time, uh, there's a song I really, it, um, maybe you would say is a pet peeve. I don't like it. It says, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I hear that song time and time again, and I said, well, make up your mind. You're either one or the other. You're either a sinner or you're saved by grace. You're not a sinner anymore if you're saved by grace. The, the book of 1 John and all throughout the Bible makes it plain. And the, the, David says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear me. So when we're saved, we're no longer a sinner. The Lord said, go and sin no more. First John, it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. And in that same chapter, he says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. I think they need to change that song, I was a sinner, but now I'm saved by grace. Praise God. Even in the worst of times, there is peace under it all. You know... We have, many of us maybe have gone through some uh, bad times. Maybe we've lost a relative. Maybe we've had some uh, health issues, um, maybe financial issues. And, you know, I've gone through some tough times. I'm only 22 years old, but there's been some times that have been trying and, and stressful and so on. And uh, there was a period of time where I really went through a lot. And I had surrendered all to Jesus. And through this whole time, it was a difficult time. But, you know, it, I could feel all the stress. I could feel all the burden. I, the devil would just really likes to play upon that and try to get us discouraged and down in the dumps. But under it all, there was a deep, settled peace in my soul. A deep, settled peace in my soul. Though the billows of sin o'er me roll, he abides. Christ abides. Under it all, the peace was still there. I never said, Lord, why are you doing this to me? I never questioned God. I never questioned, why am I going through this? But as I look back at that time, I thank Him for it. I thank Him for those hard times that we've gone through, that He can purify us. But I'm so thankful for His promise of peace. I can't imagine going through a tough time without the peace of God. As our brother was saying earlier, I don't see how people do it. 
I don't see how they do it, going through tough times without Jesus. They turn to all the things, and certainly these worldly pleasures will never satisfy, never, but only Jesus. Not only is there a spoken peace, but there is a guarding peace, and a verse that has meant much to me in my Christian walk, and it's one of those verses that are uh, well quoted, and we probably all know it, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God, and the peace of God which surpasses or which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I like that verse. There's a promise there. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. I don't understand it. I'm going through a hard time. Why is there still a peace there? Because Jesus is still there. We're still faithful to the Lord. He's going to be there with us. And it's so wonderful to, to take a, a verse, to claim a promise, and to keep it, make it our own. The peace of God which passeth, and the King James says, which surpasseth all under, surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And understanding that word keep in the King James means the same thing, keep or to guard. They wouldn't say uh, a door guard, but a door keeper. So that is the, the same word there. But I like what that word means. How many have heard of the Wesley, uh, Wesley Bible? It's a study Bible. It's a, it's a New King James Bible. I don't believe it's in print anymore. There's a newer version that is not as good, but it was put together by some different holiness commentators in the 90s, and it's a really good Bible. It's New King James Version. I like the New King James okay. And they were talking about this word here, and this really meant a lot to me, the word keep or guard. And the Wesley Bible says that this is like a squadron of soldiers guarding our heart. That's what that word means there. That he will keep your hearts and minds as, as we have faith, as we keep to him. There's like a, a group of soldiers in our heart that are keeping us. And you know, I think this evening, you know, the devil really comes. Oh, he, he can sometimes come and we can just feel overwhelmed. Sometimes we can go through periods of time and, and spiritual battles and spiritual darkness where the devil really comes and we really have to fight it. We really have to plead the blood of Jesus. We've got to claim his name. We've got to uh, uh, claim those promises and quote that scripture towards the devil. But I'm thankful as I think of that guarding or that squadron of soldiers keeping our heart that fights against the devil. You're not getting this heart. Jesus is in here, and as long as, as this uh, uh, brother or sister wants to serve the Lord, you can't have it. I like what Paul says. I am, persuaded, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, neither height nor depth nor any other living creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Truly a spoken peace. In the darkest of hours, our God, Jesus gives us peace in times of death and health issues and financial problems. Whatever the issue may be, Jesus is there. He's given us promises. The devil will try to rob us of our peace, but through Jesus, we can defeat the enemy. The Bible is full of many precious promises like these, but praise God for his presence and his peace. Those are two promises that are wonderful promises for the saints of God. He has promised those to us. Let us meditate on those promises of God and let us stand on the promises of God. Something I've done in my own walk and I know that many other uh, saints of God have done is that they'll memorize a promise and when the devil comes knocking and tries to give us a hard time, we quote that scripture verse. We quote it right to him. We claim that scriptural promise. One of the verses that I quoted was the one I just mentioned. Nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. What did Jesus do when the devil came to him? Tempted him. He quoted the scripture. He latched hold of that. We can find promises that we can latch hold of. And you know, we can go through... What's so wonderful about this Bible is it's exhaustive in almost every situation. Now, understanding that maybe um, the Bible doesn't mention everything, you won't find anything in there about a, a Toyota or a Ford or a Chevy or so on, or those type of things as we live in modern times. But I'm thankful we have a Bible that's exhaustive. We can find principles, we can find verses, and I would encourage us tonight, including myself, Whatever time, hard time we may be going through, or maybe the next time we face something, to go to the Word of God, find some verses, latch a hold of them, find those promises, and use it to combat the enemy. Because he is mean. 
The scripture says that God is no respecter of persons, but I say the devil is no respecter of persons in the exact opposite way. He doesn't care if we're two years old or 102 years old. He wants to see that our souls are damned to the pits of hell. I'm thankful to uh, have a lady here that is, uh, how old is she? Over 100. We have a member at our church, her name is Ruth Flanagan. And I just recently went to her 103rd birthday party. She's been serving the Lord and, and been in the Nazarene church for, for many years. And my grandpa said, well, Sister Flanagan, this was several years ago in her 90s, uh, maybe early, maybe she was just 100, I can't remember. He said, Sister Flanagan, you have it made easy. You're older now and, and now you can just kind of coast. The devil's not going to bother you. And she said, oh, no, Pastor. She said, the devil is just as mean as ever. And I got to read my Bible and I gotta, I've got to pray and I got to tell the devil to get the hints. Get behind me, old devil. The devil is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care if it's a child. Look across America and really the great holocaust in our country is abortion. So many babies that are being slaughtered on the altars of convenience. The devil doesn't care. He doesn't care. But Jesus does. He loves all of us. He cares for all of us. And I'm thankful for the promises as saints of God, as Christians, as believers, born again believers that we can claim, that we can latch hold of. God has promised his presence. He will not fail us. He will not leave us. God has promised his peace. A spoken peace, as we read in Psalm chapter 85, verse 8, and a guarding peace in Philippians chapter 4. I'm so thankful. And all of this through faith and trusting Jesus. And soon, soon this old world, when we have to, understanding that this life is cursed because of sin. But I'm thankful that another promise that I'd, I would just like to briefly mention is that he's promised that he'll go to prepare a place for us. That where he is, there we may be also. And he's coming back someday. And there's a song that says, Are you ready? Are you ready? And I'm thankful to be ready by the grace of God. And soon I'm going to leave this old world of sin. And I'm going to say, Goodbye, old world, I'm through. Praise God. I'm so thankful for his promises. Let's stand. so wonderful to be here and it's been encouraging God's presence has truly been here and um, I do want to open the altars I don't know that we'll have an altar call but if you have a need maybe you've been going through a, a rough time you can come forward and we'll certainly pray with you and we want to give you that chance we want to give you that opportunity to come and pray and um, I know that the, um, friends and, and, and the saints can gather in and pray with you but if not, I would like to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the exceeding and great and precious promises, Lord, that you have given to us. And Lord, you've given, to us to, given them to us for a reason. And we're so thankful that we can trust you. We can trust your word. And Lord, what you say, you will do. We're thankful, Lord, for all that you have done, Jesus. And we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And I pray, Lord, for this congregation this evening that you would encourage, that you would bless, that you would anoint. And Lord, you know those of us that go through trying times and difficult times, Jesus. And I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would just comfort. Lord, that you would just uh, come along beside. Lord, you're the God of all comfort, the God of all peace. We pray, Lord, that you would just be with this congregation, encourage them. And Lord, that you would show them your love and help them through. Lord, I pray that you would give us open ears and open eyes to do what you would have us to do. Help us, Lord, to be listening. So the scripture says, my sheep know my voice. Help us, Lord, to be listening. And not allow the cares of this life and the, and the commotion of this life to drown out the voice of the Holy Spirit. But help us, Lord, to be carefully listening and to have those times of blessed quietness. Lord, to have those times where we're in our prayer closet. We're trusting you. Thank you, Lord, for a, a congregation that loves the Lord and, and believes in the way of holiness. And I pray, Lord, that you just be with them now. In Jesus' name, amen.